Mauritius Airport, direction Rodrigue. Wild and unpolluted, the island is part of the Mascarene Archipelago and 400 miles from the island of Mauritius. We are flying over the Indian Ocean when we catch a glimpse of the outline of Rodrigue, a volcanic caprice surrounded by an uncontaminated coral reef. No larger than 109 square kilometers, Rodrigue is encircled by a lagoon of 200 square kilometers, with the sea doubling land in size. Its maximum height is 355 meters, and its depths daze you with their beauty. It was 1528 when the Portuguese explorer Diego Rodriguez discovered it, naming it Authentic Island. After approximately an hour and a half flight, we land and prepare for the formal entry into this tiny corner of the world. The strong Creole identity of Rodrigue immediately strikes us, even though we know its history, which made this place a crossroads of peoples and cultures over the years. Arabs, Dutch, French and English controlled this island until it became an autonomous region of Mauritius, which now aspires to full sovereignty. Waiting for us is Jean-Paul, a true Rodrigan with an infected smile, who will guide us in our discovery of the island. Welcome to Rodrigue. Uh, it's a very beautiful island, so I will let you discover Rodrigue from the bottom of the sea to the top of the island. Yes, Jean-Paul is right. We haven't come to Rodrigue to venture into one of its multiple pulsating hearts, but rather everyone who makes the island alive and unique. The island has mysterious summits immersed in vegetation and underground caverns which magically create cathedrals of rock and jam-packed sea depths. And we want to tap on all of this richness and seize it with images and emotions. Our first stop off is Cotton Bay, where we have an appointment with Jackie and Fabio. They will take us by hand to explore the ocean, acting as our entry into the seabed of Rodrigue, the island that has more sea than land. Jackie, the manager of the diving center we have come to, tells his guests that his scuba center was the first in the island, a place which he transformed from an impromptu holiday into a home forever. Fabio, on the other hand, the avid and precise diving instructor, gets things going with his briefing, which we listen to very carefully. This morning we are going to Saint-François. I've already drawn the site here. It's a channel about 10 minutes from the dive centre by boat. This is the lagoon here. Okay, both sides of the channel is the lagoon and uh, we descend at the end of the channel in the lagoon, okay? So this is our point of descent. It's about four, four meter, okay? We follow the sand here, and we start descending progressively till approximately here. So what you're going to do is, I'm going to follow like a special track where normally if there is a turtle, if there is the, the jacks, the trevally, they will be on, the, on that track. The current in the, in the lagoon goes that way, okay? So it always exits the channel to go out. We can't go too further here because the current exceeds. The current is going more and more that way, okay? Once we are ready, we will go over to the boat and climb on board. The sky has now decided to give us some rain and clouds, but as we are about to protect ourselves under the cloak of the sea, we don't care. So, let's go to Saint-Francois. Despite the lack of sun and the choppy sea, 
we can see the transparency and visibility that characterize the sea of the island. After we dive into the blue, we swim along the gully where, apart from the current, we immediately sense the presence of a benign atmosphere. We watch Fabio, who searches out his underwater friends, like this trumpet fish, which, undisturbed, goes back into his coral home. The seabed is studded with caverns and sinuous recesses, where small shoals of yellow gruntfish ritually hang around with angelfish and corangidae. Fabio lights up every sinuous recess without hesitation, as if it were an apartment block inhabited by habitué, like this lobster, which immediately became the object of our curiosity. All of a sudden, skimming the seabed of white sand, we turn our heads and see a shoal of large pelagic fish. They are big corangidae, which can grow up to 170 centimeters in length and 80 kilos in weight. Powerful, aggressive predators, known for their great strength in combat, they swim extremely quickly through the corals of the reef, where they hunt both night and day, mainly crustaceans and fish. Fabio watches them fascinated, as though it were the first time, thus showing his huge passion for the underwater marine world. Well, I'm originally from here, from Udri, and uh, I started diving, I think, uh, I don't really remember, maybe at 16 years old. And I was very, very young, so I used to swim like uh, at the harbour and uh, we, have a, we have a shore here. So I always be, I, I'm always like, uh, always have liked the sea, but I always wanted to know what was beneath. I've been diving around for around seven years approximately, eight, seven years. So since I started, I never stopped. <laughs> My favorite is turtles, okay? I've got a tattoo of a turtle, so. We return to the surface, changing from sea to land, and continue our exploration of Rodrigue, one of the last paradises in the world still intact. Now we are going to move on uh, the François Legard Park, which is in the uh, west of the island. At uh, the François Legard Park, there is a reserve of turtles, and uh, we get also uh, beautiful caves where you can see stalagmite and stalactites. blindly put ourselves into the hands of Jean-Paul. He will surely bring us to an exceptional nature sanctuary. Indeed, he loves the land deeply and desires no more than to show us its most beautiful aspects. The François Legat private protected area preserves hundreds of giant turtles in various stages of their lives and the Caverne Patate, a system of caves 18 meters under sea level. Doreen, a true Creole guide, will accompany us on this nature journey. Uh, here we are in the giant tortoise and cave reserve found in Osquito. And uh, like you can see here, uh, we've got some tortoises. So we are trying to reintroduce the tortoises to Rodrigues. So there you can see we've got some small ones and in fact these babies uh, they were born here on Rodrigues and you see we've got the, this is the species from Madagascar. 
The show is extremely evocative. Being able to observe from up close animals who appear in natural poses is truly rare. And we appreciate this unique moment, greatly moved. So this one, they uh, start to reproduce at the age of uh, 16 years old. The first babies that we've got here was on the first uh, on the third January of last year of 2008, and up to now we've got like 305. We think that we've got like 150 babies per year. It really seems that these turtles completely ignore us. Their loving dance is immortalized without any shyness whatsoever, almost to remind us of the true meaning of wild nature. Here the course of things is not interrupted by any trappings. Thanks to protected areas like François Legat, everything flows in accordance with the laws of nature, sweetly transporting us back in time. So this is the one from Aldabra and these tortoises, they are adults at the age of 30 and uh, in the reserve we are between 40 and 90 years old. And in fact, they are vegetarian. They eat only uh, uh, everything which is green, meaning fruits, vegetables, and grasses. Like you can see here, uh, in the past, we, all this used to be a river. And, uh, and at the same time, all this, this part was covered and because the river flows through it, the roof just collapsed. And it's the same river who dig the Grand Cavern, who pass through the canyon, a bit through the, through the Cavern de la Vierge, but it never reached the sea because the river afterward just changed direction. We continue following Dorine, who brings us from the light of the sun into the darkness. So here we are at the entrance of the uh, Grand Cavern and uh, you know here in Rodrigues we are a volcanic island but we've got limestone caves and uh, in fact we can say they are very important to the island and in fact this cave can prove that the island that Rodrigues is the oldest uh, uh, between the Mascarene Island. Doreen tells us about the François Legat protected area of the island of Rodrigue with great dedication. The same dedication she has for her island. I like Rodrigue because it's my island and also because we've got some uh, natural and beautiful things, like you can see the, these caves. So uh, in Mauritius, in Réunion, you won't have these, and that's why I like my island. And you can see that everything is more like uh, natural, more wild, comparing to other, other countries. Once our exploration of the cave has come to an end, we leave this nature sanctuary that is safe and sound from damage caused by man to go and discover another aspect of the island of Rodrigue. While nature must be safeguarded as the patrimony of everyone and for everyone, the human aspect is also a heritage to preserve and maintain intact, so as to be conserved and respected. The island's economy, not yet developed for tourism, is based on sheep farming, agriculture, craftsmanship and fishing. All trades which reflect local culture, practices and traditions. The population of Rodrigue amounts to roughly 40 million, mainly made up of Catholics, and has its roots in Europe, Africa, Madagascar and China. The main language is Rodriguean Creole, and French and English are spoken and understood by only some inhabitants. In fact, 
communicating with the inhabitants of this island is not that easy. My name is Marie Rose de Lima Casimir. Here, the locals live with the animals as if they were an integral part of the family. Dogs, goats, cows and sheep live in the open air with women who improvise local dances and children who try to play the bongos. We get back into the car to get to know the local population better and to document their integrity and authenticity. A people who have not yet given in to the customs and traditions brought to the island by tourists. A people who have not yet realized that their way is only one of many ways to exist in the world and that, in actual fact, there are many diverse ways. We realize that music is a must-have in this place. It is everywhere, in the homes, shops, bars, bars which sit alongside small tailor shops with their doors directly on the rather deserted street. Back in the car once more, we reach another local place to be preserved as a pure, authentic patrimony. A small artisan workshop where wickerwork objects are made, bags, hats, shoulder bags, rugs. And after the craftsmen, we go to meet the fishermen, legendary figures of Rodrigue, who cover the entire area with such accuracy that it fascinates us for hours. Octopus fishermen are almost legendary fishermen here in Rodri. They generally go out to the fishing points with their typical sailing boats. And when the tide goes out, they get into the water in their clothes and armed with rudimentary spears. As well as octopus fishermen, there are also numerous piqueuses d'ourit, the octopus fisherwomen on the island. There are officially over 2,000 fishermen registered in Rodrigue. Then there are also over 600 women who fish octopus and 2,000 casual fishermen. They all mix skill with superstition, graft and solidarity influencing technique with ancient tribal rituals. In fact, octopus is everywhere in Rodrigue. In restaurants, on the bar's daily menus, on the stalls along the streets, as Jean-Paul shows us. This is dry octopus. And then here is uh, Sorted fishes. Okay. They transport the octopus into like this, into this. Jean Paul shows us these products along the streets of the capital, Port Maturin, a peaceful town which shows the numerous gifts of this lavish earth. Walking along the city's streets, it seems like everyone wants to show us the characteristic traits of this earth. Shops, small markets, alleyways, everywhere you go, people don't hide. Nor do they hide what they have, but instead, put it on show. They are a proud people, full of the pride of those aware of having the good fortune of having been born in a land and sea paradise. <laughs> On this sailing trip, we see the transparency of these waters firsthand, together with the complete lack of traffic and noise. We turn our heads around 360 degrees, and all we see is a wild coast, in no way built up, reflections on a crystal clear sea, bright colors of an unreal sphere. The horizon is infinite before our eyes that look around ceaselessly.
Coco Island. Here we are on a natural reserve with uh, four types of birds. After a good hour sailing, we put our feet onto this strip of land, which can only be accessed by no more than 15 boats a day, with a maximum of nine passengers each. So welcome to Coco Island. Coco Island uh, is a natural reserve which is uh, 1.5 kilometers long. So we'll go inside to visit the birds. We have here the lesser nodi. This is uh, the nodi. And uh, the lesser nodi, they build their nest with seaweed. Normally, they have only, only one egg. These birds, they, are, they live together until very long. And uh, this can happen when one of them die. Later, the, the husband or the, the wife can die too. Hmm? Only by, uh, by sadness, they can die. Here we can see that the brown nodi, they lay egg down on the, on the grass down. And the lesser nodi, they build their nests on the trees. The bird can also be very aggressive because they, build their, they have their nest all around the, the path here. And uh, <clears throat> so this can happen that the birds attack men when we, when we cross here. But, uh, but uh, we don't have to, to be afraid. We just have to... So here you can see the fairy tip. This is a bird with, uh, which lay only one egg and uh, she don't build, uh, build nest. She just uh, put the, the egg on the, the, the branch. When we reach the beach dedicated to white terns and their young, we are assailed by the doubt that we are caught in a dream bubble launched into an unimaginable reality. We can tell the young by their plumage and the adults by their protective behavior around their creatures. There is a mood of universal love, and we are obviously moved. So I will ask you now to profit the, the island the maximum, but do not abuse, because here we are very close to the equator, and you can be burned by the sun. Take care. When our guide leaves us, we realize that we have left the only human being, or almost, that we have met in this open air science laboratory. A place where everything unfurls naturally, according to the simple laws of nature. As always, Jean Paul is the one to show us how the people, and not just the animals, of Rodrigue live. <laughs> Here we are at uh, Janet Places, and uh, some people in Audrey uh, have a guest house. We have arrived at a kind of bed and breakfast where a set table awaits us. Hello, Janet, how are you? Okay, I'm fine. And you? Yes, I'm fine. And uh, here, <coughs> here is Janet. We immediately realize that this is not a normal accommodation facility, but an oasis of happiness. Everyone cooks everything. Jeannette sings, and the wood burns. <laughs> and when everything is ready, the kitchen is transformed into a very unusual stage where spicy aromas are joined by electrifying energy. This is what bewitches us about Rodrigue. Its exciting, dancing soul, which puts on show the spectacle of life. Whether it be about animals, nature, sea, music, or dances. Like the Sega, which plays African and Celtic rhythms, 
sweeping us along in the wake of sensual, vital movements. And so we say goodbye to this island, where contaminations and uniqueness unite in a miracle which never conceals itself, but, on the contrary, appears on the stage of life. <laughs>